Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Do you still believe that about yourself? Do you wake up in the morning thinking about how God designed you for a task? And he knew that before he even made you. And he goes on, he says, then, so, so what do you think Jeremiah's response would be? I mean, wouldn't you think Jeremiah just heard from God and said, you know, I made you for a purpose, you're going to be this prophet. You would think Jeremiah would go, wow, God spoke, he made me for this, he thought through how he made me, I was declared to be a prophet. But his response was, ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. He says, I I can't talk, I'm just a kid. Isn't that crazy? How God Almighty tells you, look, I made you for this. I declared this. I am God. I designed you for this. Before you came out of your mother's womb, I said you would accomplish this. And his response is, I don't think I can do it. That's pretty typical, isn't it? Doesn't that sound like us? Because some of you right now in your heads, in your minds, you're going, yeah, that's right. No, I do believe that God made me. I do believe that that this was for a purpose. I do know that there's a purpose for me on the earth because God doesn't mess up. And you'll know that, yet you'll walk out these doors and you'll start looking at all the things wrong with yourself. Well, I'm not as smart as this guy. I can't sing like her. I can't lead worship like I can't teach like him. I can't. You, You know, you just start looking at all these things and that's exactly what he says. And God's answer is, Do not say I'm only a youth. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. God's response is, don't say you're just a youth. It's the same thing. Remember when when he called Moses? And what was Moses' response? Uh, He starts stuttering. He goes, "I, I can't speak. I can't speak. I can't do it. And remember God's response to Moses. Do you remember what he says? He looks at Moses and he says, Who made your mouth? I love that. Don't miss that. See, because a lot of times when we put ourselves down, like, oh, my brain doesn't work real well. Well, my mouth doesn't really work well. I don't have a very good voice. I don't think... Okay, you're not being humble at that moment when you, when you degrade yourself and talk about all the things you can't do. You would be humble if you created yourself. But since you didn't create yourself and someone else made you, when you say your mouth doesn't work right... Who are you putting down? You're not putting yourself down. You're putting the Creator down. Saying, God, you screwed up when you made my mouth because it stutters. God says, wait, who made your mouth? Are you saying I made a mistake? Are you saying I failed when I made your brain that doesn't work just right? But to take all of those insecurities and say, no, God, you made me. I'm fearfully, I'm wonderfully made. And so I'm going to accomplish whatever you've created me to do. I tell you, this passage gave me so much confidence. He says, you can go. You can say everything you need to say to whoever you need to say it to. In fact, you go out in faith and the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. God says, I'll feed you the words. I'll take care of it. My, when, when I set something in motion, it doesn't stop. And, and, and if that doesn't work, later on in, in that same passage, God says to them in, in verse 17, he says, but you dress yourself for work. And arise to say to them everything I commanded you. Do not be terrified by them, lest I terrify you before them. I love that verse. He says, if you're going to be afraid of them, he goes, I'll give you something to be afraid of. Okay? So at that point, he doesn't really have a choice. And he just says, Jeremiah, you just go, because I made you for this. I'm going to give you the words to say this, and there's no backing down. Don't be afraid of them. And then at the end, in verse 18, he says, I, behold, I make you this day a fortified city, an iron pillar, bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They'll fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, declares the Lord, to deliver you. He says to Jeremiah, everyone's going to be against you, but don't worry about it. He he says, look, the kings are going to hate you. That's the, the, the authorities, the, the, the kings of Judah, it's officials, it's priests. 
He goes, the city officials, they'll, they'll all be against you. The priests, the other religious leaders, all the other pastors, they'll be against you. And then he goes, and the people, just in case I left anyone out, they're all going to be against you. He goes, but don't be afraid because I'm with you. And I always look at that pastor and go, God, could I do that? Could I do that? Could, I, could you really drop me in a city where everyone was against me? And I'd go, go ahead. My God's with me. To have this God and I mentality, to stand alone and say, you know what? The Lord's with me. He made me for this. He has filled me with his spirit to accomplish this. And so you can all be against me because my God is with me. To have that type of security and assurance 